Page 28, Mary, did you know? 4-4 four, four time, no sharps or flats, except for a few accidentals. So it's either in C major or A minor. Well, let's take a look. Look at the bottom of page 29, last measure, way down at the bottom, you hear? That sounds A minor to me, so I'm going to say this is an A minor. I want to, on this first line, I'm going to take both hands at the same time. I prefer to do these one hand at a time, but I want to see how these hands go together. So it's like in the left hand, you're here, one, and the right hand comes in on beat two. One, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and... See, nobody's playing on three because your both hands are tying down. Again, one, and two, and three, and four, and four. So that half note is an A, a B, a D, and an E. Lovely, huh? Now let's go to the right hand. So it's three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Count it out very carefully because the right, the left hand has different rhythm. It's two and three. One and two and three and four. Watch this fingering, his thumb, thumb here. And four. And four and one. And one and two. Now, I'm going to talk about the first measure of the on page 29 a little later. Just go on, just play a quarter note. Go on, one and two. three and four. See, a lot of these notes are tied. If the ties are bothering you, then temporarily take out the tie and just play all the notes. But once you have that, put the ties back in because they're important. Now, go on. The last measure on the second line there is here. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and The coda at the very bottom is fifth finger and hold that down as you play these eighth notes. And fourth finger, the thumb is for the D. Hold the fourth finger here and we do fourth so we can use fifth here and connect. Left hand starting with the second line on page 26. One and two and three and four and one. recommend a fifth finger on that second B because that puts you in position for the rest of that etc bottom line there last line on page 28 and then here etc hopefully you can get all that okay Let's go down on page 29 to the bottom to the coda, it's just octaves. And then the last two measures is I recommend a five on that E to put you in position. One and two and three and They're saying third finger, second finger works, whichever you you need this here. So third finger is what you're gonna use on if you can get third finger on it. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Here, and then the last note's an A. So slowly put the hands together. It's You already did the first line.
that is really weird in the second measure of the second line because you're here, here. That's that beats Todd. You lift up. So again, to begin the second line is here. Now I recommend you try to, if you can, observe the rest in the right hand. That's at the beginning of the second, that's a quarter note. Right there. When you play the A, the right hand comes up. sharp does not sound right in that uh, at the end of the second line here and that's what's there it's not my fault they did it Let's go on on page 29, second end, it's the second line, the second ending, it's the third measure. Very important here to keep the left hand soft. We can hear these fine, you don't have to bring them out. Uh, uh, again, the third line is here. takes you back. I don't think there's any problems with the code. It's pretty straightforward as long as you can play the hand separately there. However, I'll need to talk about a couple of things. The dynamics put in last. You can do that you're on your own. This is not a, a fast piece. It says gently with reflection. Okay, fine. This is where you're reflecting a lot of something. Or a gen, but do it gently. You'll notice there's three verses. You look on page 28 and when you do this, if you do this whole thing, you'll actually do all three verses. You'll play that three times because on page 29 on the second line you have a first and second ending. So on the first ending you'll repeat it and you go back to the reverse repeat sign there on page 28 and you do the second verse. Then whenever you get back over to page 29 in the second line you'll skip the first ending, you've already done it oh, one time, go to the second ending and go on. Well, you get down to the end of the fourth line there, and there's a DS all coda. Well, the DS means go back to the sign, so you got to find the sign. So look around for a sign to go back to, because it's a DC means go back to the beginning. We don't go to the beginning, we go to the sign. Where's the sign? And if you look it over very carefully, you'll find there is no sign. So you think, okay, what's going on? Well, it's quite simple. They screwed up. Well, you do that a lot. There's a lot of details in music. It's easier to m mess these things up. But over on page 28, at the beginning of the second line, where the reverse repeat sign is, that should have a sign above it. It would be a fancy looking S squiggly thing, S thing. That's the, you go back to there. And now you're going to do the third verse. And then when you get over to page 29, the end of the first line, you see the circle with the crosshair to coda. Then you jump down and do the code at the very end, bottom line. The point is, we're going to do these three times. Well, look at the first line on page 29. You'll notice in the first measure you have a quarter note, right hand, I'm talking right hand only. You have a quarter note, and then a couple quarter rests, and then you have some little notes. Plus this quarter note, the big quarter note. Plus these little notes, the eighth note. They go to the words based on which verse you're doing. So when I do a play with me on this, the first time through I'm going to play a quarter note because that's the word in the first verse. The second time after I've repeated and I go through, I do all three eighth notes. 
And then when I do the DS, I'll code a thingy and I come back through here again. I just do the last two eighth notes. So they're accommodating all three verses and that's why these notes are this way. You get the same problem at the end of the line there. The last one, the first time is just an eighth note. The second time is just an eighth note. But the third time, before you go to the coda, you got to play two eighth notes. You don't play the F, you play a C, D, because that leads into the E at the coda. Here. And so you have to be careful. It depends on which verse you're on as to what you do. You find this in music when there's verses involved. Now, if you've got singers singing and all, then you don't have to worry about it, because they'll take care of all of that. You don't even have to bring out the melody. You just kind of play it and enjoy yourself and you can rearrange it or whatever you want to do and the singers will take care of it. But if you're playing it as a solo, then we have to be careful. You, you do bring out the melody and try and bring out these notes according to the verses. Not that it really matters if nobody's singing, but let's be accurate if we can. Then on top of that, we add pedal. And again, they're keeping the pedal simple for you, but it tends to blur it up. It's going to be overlapping pedal, legato pedal, so I'm going to push the notes down and then the pedal at the beginning, we're here. And then I'm going to change the pedal after I play the first note in the next measure. Again. And I'm going to lift the pedal before I play the eighth note, so there's a little silence. Exactly the way they're showing, this is what you get. Listen carefully. I'm going to start at the beginning of the second line here. sounds okay to you, go with it. I think it sounds terrible. Just terrible. At the very least, get rid of the mushiness. So, back to the second line. The first line's fine, don't worry about it. You're not, you're not changing harmony there. It's, well, you're changing a little bit, but that's okay. But the second line here, I would lift the pedal up when I play that E again. need to pedal that. Now I'm going to pedal this because I want to connect this and this. And I need the pedal to help me out there. So I'm using the pedal to help me connect the notes in the left hand when I need it. But I can play the, the right hand legato. I don't need pedal to help me out there. So I'm, I'm paying attention to the left hand really. Measure the page. I'm just pedaling the first beat and the third beat. And I do that a lot, just the first, the third, every other beat, sort of. It helps to reinforce the natural accents. And at the top, page 29, I don't pedal that. to connect these. Now here, I don't want to smear this. No. So it's it's like, be very careful on the pedaling. Let's go on the, the last measure of the second line there on page 29. We're here. Here, I'm pedaling, I'm listening to the, the melody. I don't want to smear the melody if I can help it. It's like in the third line down, second measure. I don't pedal it. 
until I play the A. And then I pedal to and then change it just to connect the left hand quarter notes. These are connected. So the third line is here. When I do that, I don't pedal until I play the second note. When I get the, I don't want to smear them. I don't want to catch them both. Same thing there. I'm pedaling very little. I'm just pedaling when I need it to connect the notes when I need them because I can't do it with the fingers or to reinforce the natural accents. I don't just pedal everything. If you pedal everything and you're then in my opinion you're probably not really listening to it. You're listening more like what you think you're hearing in your head and that's not what you're producing. If you'd record yourself and go back and really listen to the recording then you could hear all this blurriness going on. And I'm encouraging you to listen to that. Let's go down to the bottom of page 29 on the coda here. They're smearing this and I don't care for that. I might pedal in between the measures to connect it because I can't do it with the hands. And then the next to last measure, I'm, I'm changing the pedal on the E. Measure is not bad, you just pedal and lift up. That's my opinion on the pedal, and it's just suggestions. I like to do a slow play with me. I'm going to play it just like it's written with all the repeats and all the jump going on. I'm not doing the dynamics and all that, I'm going to go really super slow. This gives you a chance to check and play along if you will to make sure you got the right notes and the rhythms going on. And you may want to do it one hand at a time with me for a while, too. I'll give us four counts. One and two and ready and go and. Mm -hmm. 